This is a 100% 3D printed electric surfboard, you know, except the actual board motors. Well, most of it, but the water jet propulsion is in fact all 3D printed, even the metal impellers, which these units can be insanely expensive, so I googled and found these for $10. I've made three videos how I built the first electric surfboard, but it kept breaking, so I started by removing the water cooling, which goes from the back of the jet drive and forces water through the electrical components to remove the heat that it generates. There were threaded rods going through the entire rear container and surfboard to keep it in place, which worked great, so we'll probably do the same thing again. Now it was all about getting the container ripped out. With that done, we could move on to assemble the 3D printed jet drives, which would require threaded inserts, screws, bearings, rubber rings, and grease metal impellers, second stage, housing, first stage, and motor mount. We're using the same electrical system, a small battery that powers a receiver by a BEC, and now double every single part because we're making two of these things. This is the main housing printed in PLA that will hold the stages and motor mount, so I pushed M5 threaded insert that makes it way easier and much stronger. At this point though, I could insert the rubber ring that helps with the waterproofing together with this bearing. You can also put grease here to make it even harder for the water to enter. I sketched up and 3D printed this new improved container, but it didn't quite fit so I had to do a little post modeling. This is the main shaft, it's 8mm and I flattened one side so that it locks inside the second impeller like this. The water drives could then go inside the container. The stages and impellers also went in just fine and this is what we have right now. However, for everything to be waterproof and stay in place, I added silicon and let it dry. In the meanwhile, I noticed the motors were quite noisy and the bearings inside of them were probably damaged. But I made sure the motors were spinning the right way by submerging the impeller to confirm the rotation. One of the motors were spinning the opposite way though, and I fixed it in the software by literally clicking two buttons. The bearing is a significant upgrade from the previous jet drives as it keeps the shaft completely straight instead of using a brass insert that eventually wears down and makes the impeller vibrate as the hole becomes larger and larger. I made small markings on the shafts to know where the flat spot was and decided to use this kind of coupler as it's far superior at removing vibrations but not as solid as this one though. What can happen is that the metal will experience fatigue and eventually break but I was willing to give that a try. I fired up the motors and everything was surprisingly working, so it was time to test it in the water. I could instantly feel that it was way more powerful than before and nothing had caught on fire yet, so I decided to attempt riding it for the first time and here is how that went. Det är lite vatten i. Det är det. Väldigt, väldigt vatten. 
PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser, and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM, and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They metal 3D printed the impellers, and here's how they turned out. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. Now the motors were getting very hot because of the power increase, and this is the impeller that we used last year. This is the dual stage impeller system that we're using this year. The motors were getting hot with just this impeller. Now why the f the water cooling was working just fine based on this clip? We could get lower KV motors that would be both expensive and I would have to wait six months for the package to arrive. Or we could remove the second impeller and just shorten the entire system by cutting the shaft and just using the final stage like this. But now it doesn't fit because the shaft is too... That would make the electric motor have to move less water, thus decreasing the amperage and not generating as much heat. So that's what we're doing. We're cutting the shaft, making everything shorter and more compact with just one impeller. All right, let's go to the water and make sure it works. There's a little water in the container, so yeah, that's the least of our words. And so I was finally able to ride it and decided to start from the raft, which is almost cheating as you're already standing up. Though the performance hasn't been much better from when we built it the first time, the reliability have been way higher as I've been able to ride it for the past couple of weeks without anything breaking. The motors, ECs, batteries and the connectors are only getting warm, but I would still like to add more batteries for better range. I took the raft out to see the top speed and so here's how I did that. To everyone's surprise, everything is still working. The only thing I would change for next time is getting four more additional batteries that would provide a six minute runtime instead of just three. And it would also distribute the load on the XT90 connectors because they are getting quite hot, too hot actually. And so it would decrease the load on each XT90 connector by 50%. Uh, it would also alleviate the battery a bit because they are also getting quite warm. Everything is in fact getting quite warm. The water cooling is routed so that the motors gets the cold waters first and then the pea warm water from the motors goes up to the ECs and that's actually the right way to do it. The Mark Rober genius plan is to fly out the drone exactly 100 meters and so right when I'm about to pass the raft I go full throttle on the surfboard for the entire duration till we reach the drone and so that way we know how long time it took to go those 100 meters and so that we can calculate the speed. So here we go, syncing the cameras. I'm all alone, so I got my helmet on, I got my life vest and an ID, so it's easier to identify the body after. Here we go. 
Okay, we're exactly 100 meters out. I'm just gonna make a U-turn. Right when I pass the raft, I'm gonna go full throttle. Here we go. I'm using these massive lithium iron phosphate 24 volt batteries to plug into this inverter that powers this charger but this charger isn't very powerful so I brought a second charger and now I can charge all four batteries at the same time. I'm getting absolutely plowed with questions about what exact components that I use for my electric surfboard so here's just a quick recap. I'm using 8 amp hour 6 cell batteries, 4 of those in series and parallel to make a 12S 16 amp hour battery. Now that's really the smallest battery you could possibly go for. If you go any lower, smaller, it can't supply the power that it needs. And so it's also the fact that I'm only getting three minutes of runtime. So if you want any longer than three minutes, definitely go larger. Now for the motors, I'm using these 56 114 SSS motors. They are 500 kV, this one says 360, but I'm using the 500 kV version and that works great with a 60 millimeter impeller. Now if you have a larger impeller, 80 for example, you definitely want to go for the 360 kV version as it will be able to spin the propeller without generating too much heat. When it comes to the electric speed controllers, I'm using the Flyer 400 amps and they have been working great, so I, I can't recommend them enough. I'm using this kind of connector. It's an XT90 connector and it works just fine. You don't have to change it, but I would highly recommend getting eight batteries instead of four so you're distributing the power through all the connectors. And that's basically my recap of the components that I use for my electric surfboard. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again next time. Ciao.